there we go. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second lesson of the iBug Introductory Mac Training Program for Tuesday, March 8th. We will be continuing with where we left off from last week. Just a couple of iBug announcements. Um, remember that on Sunday, we have our iBug Cafe from 4 to 6 p.m. on Zoom. And I have been sending out all these announcements to the list. Uh, but just as a recap, they will be talking about travel apps such as Uber, Lyft, or we will rather, um, and I think even Soundscape will be covered. Another thing we have is iBug Night at the Virtual Movies on Friday. We're watching LA Confidential, and that begins at 8 with the pre-movie so social actually beforehand at 7.30. And then our usual Monday evening iBug Buzz for anyone with iOS and iDevice questions from 7 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. And for more details, you can always check our social media and website. Okay, last week we ended up with talking about the trackpad and the Mac screen layout, and then I attempted to demonstrate some things you could do on the trackpad. Rather than continue that uh, almost pointless endeavor, I am going to have us continue where we left off. I'll describe some of the trackpad commands as we go along. But we ended by talking about menu bar and dock navigation. And we can navigate them on the keyboard with either VO and the arrow keys, otherwise known as VO commands, or just standard Mac keyboard commands that anyone can use whether they have VoiceOver enabled or not. So first of all, we're going to go through that. Then we will talk about the menu extras and control center. Also closing, moving between open apps, quitting apps and closing windows. And then we'll continue on to what is supposed to be lesson two, which is exploring VoiceOver commands help. Um, using keyboard commands to quickly adjust speech attributes. We'll go into system preferences to check for software updates, adjust some accessibility and keyboard settings, and maybe if there's time, we'll go into the voiceover utility, but we probably will be saving that for next week. So to begin, I am going to go to my menu bar. First, I'm going to start my screen sharing. That would help. And that is selected, and... You have started computer audio. All right. I am going to get to my desktop with VO Shift D. It doesn't minimize to the desktop, but it's always a good place from which to start. Desktop, desktop, group. And Actions the command available. to go to the menu bar is VO M. Just as a review, when I say VO, I am talking about either control and option, or caps lock. I prefer to use caps lock, but you may use what is most comfortable for you. VOM. Menu bar, Apple. You are currently on a menu bar item. To open this menu, press control, option, space. We are told what to do on this item. Sometimes it'll tell us you know, to go through the menu. I, some, I thought the hints included more information. They don't, which is good. Right now we will use voiceover commands. So we can move from menu to menu using VO right arrow. Finder. To go you are forward. currently on a menu bar item. To open this menu, press control, option, space. And you get the idea. I can just keep pressing VO right. File, edit, view, go, window, help, help, help. Notice the thunk sound that is made when I get to help. It is used to indicate that's the last menu. And I do not have cursor wrapping enabled. So now if we press VO left. Window, go, view, edit, file, finder, Apple, Apple. You are currently on it. And we hear the thunk to indicate we're at the beginning. Let's say I want to open the Apple menu. I can do this by pressing VO space or VO down arrow. Apple menu, about this Mac. You are currently on a menu and item. And if I want to go to about this Mac, we well, we'll go back to that in a little bit. I could press VO space. System preferences, um, ellipsis. 
This you is are system on the menu. preferences. Um, you can open it in the menu bar or in the dock. App Store ellipsis. Recent items submenu. You are currently on a menu item. To choose this menu item, press Control Option Space. To close this menu, press Escape. And it doesn't tell us, well, it just tells us we can choose this item with VO space. You can also open a submenu with VO right arrow. Recent items, submenu, FaceTime, app, Google Chrome, app. And these are, are the apps on a menu that I've opened recently. And we could just press VO space Google Chrome to app. open it. Chrome. We do want to actually Mute open app. several Go apps so that we can close several apps. Now let's return to the menu bar. And this time I'm going to use my plain arrow keys. Menu bar. That is Mac Apple. keyboard commands, yeah. commands that anyone can use, whether or not they are using VoiceOver. Or if you're familiar with Windows and you are accustomed to navigating menus uh, just using the arrows. So as we did with VO right, just plain right arrow goes forward. Chrome, file, edit, view, you are history, bookmarks, profiles, tab, window, help, Apple. You are and on because we were using right arrow by itself, we could wrap back around to Apple. I guess I should have gone back to the desktop so you would hear the familiar finder menus, but that's okay. As a review from last week, I mentioned that the second menu Chrome. in the menu bar is the name of the app that's currently open. But we don't really want to go in there. We want to go to Apple. Apple. You are down currently on arrow. the Apple menu about this Mac. System we'll come back to oh. about this Mac. App Store ellipsis. Recent items submenu. We're on a submenu, so we can expand or open the submenu with right arrow. Recent items submenu. FaceTime app. And close the submenu with left arrow. Now, sometimes when you close a submenu using the arrow keys, you may be taken either back to the first menu item or it may remember your place. Uh, I find that behavior to be a bit inconsistent. About this Mac. Oh, it actually did take us back to the top. Excellent. Well, actually, no. We would have rather had it continue from where we were. But um, that's okay. I want to go ahead and activate About This Mac. I want to open it. So I'll press Enter. About This Mac. Application. About This Mac. Window. System report button has keyboard folk. And if somebody ever asks you what the make and model of your Mac is, well, now you know where to go to find that info. I am now introducing us to a new voiceover command, VO home or VO FN left arrow to simulate the home and page up and page down keys. You hold down FN while pressing your arrows. By the way, I have been creating a document. It's experimental. I'm trying that for this class, at least of several keyboard commands that I've covered in these first lessons, plus some extras you may find useful. I will get that document out to you soon. It will still probably, once I even get it out to you, need to be cleaned up further, but uh, we can try and see whether or not it's helpful. Okay, so I've mentioned VO Home, which is VOFN left arrow. That takes you to the first item in a window. That is the first item uh, sometimes, or the first item immediately to the right of the toolbar. Toolbar. You are Actually, currently... in this case, VO Home did take us to the toolbar. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It generally takes us to the toolbar or to the item immediately to the right. Mac OS Monterey. You are currently on a text. Now, because I'm in a dialog, I am using VO Navigation. So using the arrow keys by themselves works well and great in menus or in the dock, as I'm about to demonstrate. But once you're in a dialog, um, or maybe once we go later on into system preferences, even as you um, go into Element. text edit, you will want to move among the different controls or areas, whatever, using VO and the arrow keys. And we're in an area, we're in a dialogue. And so now we do use VO right and VO left. And the more you navigate your Mac, the more it will become apparent which keys to use. If you would prefer consistency, then always do everything, including menu bar, dock, and other menus, whatever, with VO and the arrows. If you 
want to see like me where you can get away without holding down VO keys, then just try not holding them down in certain instances and find out what happens. Um, and if, like I said, if you don't like that experimental model of learning the Mac, that's totally understandable. Okay, let's proceed. About this Mac Roundel image. I've pressed VO right, right and I'll continue to press VO right. Version 12.2.1. And you that tells honest. me the version of Monterey that's running. MacBook Pro 15 inch, 2017. And there's my Mac model. If we continue to go forward, we'll hear the serial number, which we really don't want. So let's go back to the desktop. Desktop. With VO desktop. Shift D. And now let's go to the dock. And you can go to the dock from anywhere. By the way, using the trackpad, you can tap two fingers at the top to get to the menu bar. Flick right to move between menu uh, menus, down arrow or one finger double tap to open a menu, um, and then a double tap to activate an item. So now we're on the desktop. Let's go to the dock, and you could go to the dock from anywhere. You technically don't need to go back to the desktop. And again here, I'll show you VO navigation versus regular keyboard navigation. Dock. Mail, 3 of 26. Okay, we are on Mail, 3 of 26. That is the last app that I had open. If I VO left... Safari, 2 of 26. Finder, open, 1 of 26. Finder, finder, open. And I continually press VO left and hear the thunk sound. Then I can VO right to Safari, go forward. Safari, Mail, System Prep Club Deck, 5 of 20. Messages, 1 new text edit, 7 of 26. And if I want to open text edit, I can press VO space. Finder. Chanel alias, text edit, open, window, lesson one, focus. And it shows me a list of recent documents I have worked in. I'm now just going to open a couple windows and text edit because that's going to help our demonstration new. later. Untied new, Unt new, new, new. Un okay. Now let's go return to the doc with VOD. Doc. Text edit, open, 7 of 26. Using VO commands, I can press VO end to jump to the trash, last 26 item. Of 26. And trash is the last item. So basically on the left side of the dock, you have your apps. On the right side of the dock, you have trash and any other folders that are listed. If I VO left, Mac training 25 of 26. That's a folder you are currently I placed on a folder. there. Separator. And you there's a separator. Holding down VO and the arrows, we hear the separator. If I just press left arrow, TV, one password, voice over utility, 21 of 26. And I press VO Actions right. Actions available, one password, TV, 23, Mac training, 25 of 26. We don't hear that separator. So using VO commands gives you a, can give you a better sense of your location. It will give you a bit more information or context um, pertaining to your location. So anyway, let's, TV, 20, I want to show you another thing. We can move items around on the dock. Um, that's a little bit more advanced than what we want to cover, but if you want to move an item left, you can press option TV, left arrow. 23 of 20, TV, move to the left of one password seven. TV, move to the left of voice over utility. And to move it right, we can press option right arrow. If you want to, um, remove an app from the dock or choose to keep it in the dock, you do that by bringing up VO Shift M. Menu. M is in menu, and then you can down arrow. Options, sub menu. You have you an are options on the menu. menu. Item to choose. You can right arrow to or VO space or VO right, whatever. All those ways you can go into a menu. Options, sub menu, keep in dock. You are and I can choose keep in dock. Remove from dock. Or remove you from are currently dock. On a menu. And I really don't want TV in Doc. I was trying to use the TV app Text edit. for Untitled watching font. the Apple event, and it was kind of complicated to get the darn thing to play. So anyway, now we're back in Text Edit. Let's return to the Doc, and I want to show you my favorite way of navigating. So if you don't really know, if you want to see things that are on your Doc, or if you just want to go item by item, you can use the arrow keys or a VO in the arrow. But... Doc. Let's say I want to open System Preferences. I can type SY. System Preferences, 4 of 25. Followed by Enter. Text edit. 
system preference and it's open let's say i want to open music Doc. i can type b o d m mail U, music Ten enter system preferences tada if i want to open mail M music v o d and the reason i'm typing out letters um mail and music both start with the letter m in windows you may be accustomed to pressing m several times in a list or an area to move to items beginning with that letter on the Mac, you actually have to spell out those things. So I can type M A three of twenty five and enter Mail, music music window shuffle. Um, if I want to Mail, open Safari, inbox. I can do V O D S A Safari two of twenty five enter so, Mail inbox Mail, and that's Safari. how at least pretty easy. But if you don't want to type, um, you can still use your arrow keys or VO in the arrow keys, or you can use the flick gestures, flick right to move to the next app in your dock and left to move back. So there's tons of options. Um, and we have Chrome. Okay, I think we have enough apps open. So I want to talk about how we can move between open apps and then quit them. We can press command tab mail inbox Chanel and press command tab again Safari untitled and again Ma mail inbox Chanel and 100 again. Safari so if you only press command tab it will only take you between the two most recent apps it's pretty familiar behavior untitled. also familiar behavior if you hold command while pressing tab mail music system preferences text edit you can then move between Finder, all the open Google apps Chrome, zoom us Safari and so forth. Then we could do Command Shift Tab. Zoom us. Google Chrome Finder text to edit to move back. Text edit. Remember, Untitled Finder is always going to be open, so you'll always have to Command Tab past that uh, whenever you're moving between apps. Okay, let's get to Safari Mail Music System Prep Finder Google Chrome. Let's Chrome. go. Well, okay, let's actually pretend that Chrome. Chrome is being difficult. It doesn't want to shut down. So how can we quickly quit an, a non-responsive app? Here again, we can use a Mac command, which is command option escape. Command option escape to open a um, list of apps that are running and to quit those apps. Authentication, force quit applications, system dialog, force quit applications. If an app doesn't respond for a while, select its name and click Force Quit. You can open this window by pressing Command Option Escape. If an app doesn't respond for a while, select its name and click Force Quit. You are currently on a text element. Okay, if I VO right Table, Google Chrome, selected. You are currently on a table. To enter this table, press Control, Option, Shift, Down Arrow. Okay. Let me tell you, give you some news. We don't actually need to go interact in this table. Why? Because this is a simple list of apps. So all we need to do, let's say we want to look at some of the apps in this table. I can down arrow. Mail, music, Safari. Okay. System preferences, text edit, zoom us, finder. Um, but let's just get back up to Google Chrome. By the way, in a table or list, you can use option up arrow to jump to the first item. Google Chrome. And option down arrow to jump to the last. And I want to quit this. There is a force quit button that is to the right. If I via right. You can open this window force quit default button. It says force you are quit default button. And actually, we wouldn't have even needed to navigate here. We could have simply pressed enter. Um, but you can press VO space or enter. Just know that when a button is a default in a dialog, you can press enter no matter where you're at and it will activate that button. Do you want to force Google Chrome to quit? And I'm going you to press any enter because again, because that is a, another default button to force quit. Table text edit, untitled five window, edit text. Okay. I now want to show you there's a method to my madness. I'm going to show you the app chooser. So VOF1 will tell you the app that's currently open and it will tell you how many other apps are open as well. Oops, let's see. Text edit, seven running applications, current activity voiceover settings. And it gives you this irrelevant thing about voiceover uh, current activity. 
if I press VOF1 again, um, in other words, you can hold down VO while pressing F1 twice. Application chooser menu, eight items. Wow, there's eight items. So in this menu, we can press down arrow. System dialogs menu. To look at the open applications. Text edit current menu, finder menu, mail menu, music menu, safari menu, system preferences menu, zoom us menu, zoom us menu. Okay, there's lots of Edit these. text, notification oh. center. Let's dismiss that. I My do not disturb should have been enabled, but I do apologize. Okay. Text edit. I'll untitled have to fix five. That. All right. So let's get back into notification. The app chooser, which you can launch with V O F one pressed twice. Another thing you can do is tap two fingers, um, twice on the left hand side of the trackpad. Tech application chooser menu eight items. Here we are at S System, dialogues, system menu. dialogues. I'll press Enter. System Dialogues menu. Two items. Force quit applications from authentication. And we have you two are um, things in System Dialogues. If So the first time you open something in the App Chooser, you'll see your list of apps. You press Enter on the app that you want. Then you will press, you'll find another menu containing the open windows that are in that app or show listing. Um, in this case, we have two system dialogues. What I also wanted to demonstrate was that system dialogues are not announced or navigated to when you press command tab. So to deal with anything in system dialogues, a software update could be a system dialogue. Um, the, these other things, the force quit applications, the info about your Mac, you have to bring up the app chooser. Force quit applications. And I'm on force quit applications, so I'll press enter. Force quit applications, system dialog, table. And now I can press you escape. You are text edit, untitled file. And I'm back in the app that was most recently open. Just to give you another example, let's say we bring up the, um, application thing again, VOF1 text F1. Text application chooser menu, eight items. The app chooser. And system dialogues we're on menu. system dialogues if I press enter. System dialogues menu, one item about this Mac. There's only one system dialogue, but I still need to press enter. About this Mac, window, Mac. To actually bring it into focus. And if I command text W, edit, now we are able to um, close that. And there we go. So how... We can also use the app chooser to move between other open apps, or we could just command tab. Safari. Mail. Let's mail. say we want to quit mail. So to quickly Inbox. quit an app, you can press command Q. Quit mail. I basically pressed command tab to get to mail, and then command Q to quit. Text edit. Safari. Um, music. If music. I want to quit music, command quit. Q. Text edit. Untitled 5. Window. Okay. I have several windows open in text edit. You can navigate between open windows by pressing command accent. Um, untitled for window. Or edit command text. shift accent. You untitled Again, I'm sure all this is extremely overwhelming. I am going to give you a document listing these commands. Another thing you can do is hear the title of the window that's open. For those of you who are Windows users or NVDA, JAWS, you might think of it as this uh, equivalent of insert T, and that is VOF2. Untitled 5 window, 5 windows. If this actually had a file name, it would tell us that file name. Um, it just calls it untitled because that's what it is. Then if you do VOF2 again. Window chooser menu, five items. You can move among the windows that are open untitled in this for app. Previous. Edit text. And I pressed, I pressed down arrow to untitled four, and then I pressed enter to actually open that window. To close one window at a time in an app, we can press command W. Close. Untitled five, window. Edit text. We can continue close. to close. Untitled 3, window, edit text. Um, let's say we want to close all of the windows. We can do that by pressing Command Option W. Window. And let's do VOF2 because I'm not sure if it closed everything. No windows. And it says no windows. You may just want to quit an app 
without closing all the windows, that's fine too. And you can still do that with command Q. If you're in something like text edit and you've written things in a document, it may prompt you to save. But if you haven't really written anything, you could still quit the app without closing all the windows. I'm now going to command Q. Safari, untitled window, toolbar. And again, in Safari, we have all these windows that I've opened. Uh, at least I think we have. Um, anyway, we can pretend that I have. Let's say I have three windows open in Safari. We could just quit Safari without um, quitting all the windows, or we could command W on each window. It doesn't matter. System preferences, system preferences, window, toolbar. And we can quit system preferences with command Q. Finder, desk. Okay, let's talk about menu extras navigation. I know I've saved that uh, for later, but the reason I have is when you are in menu extras or in your control center, you will need to use VO and the arrow keys. To bring up menu extras, we use VOMM. There is no trackpad command for this, um, so, or for the control center. But menu extras, we can press VO M M. Menu bar, M. menu extras. Mar 8, 19 hours, 26 minutes, and 53 seconds. Clock, menu extra. And you the last time I was in menu extras, I was at the very last item, which is the time. I can now press VO home to jump to the beginning. Zoom us. menu extra. And the menu extras contains apps such as Zoom, Dropbox, others, as well as status information for your battery, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. I can navigate by pressing VO right. Rocket, menu extra. That's an app for on menu uh, typing to emojis that happens to be accessible. Dropbox 143.4.4161 up to date. One password seven. CCC user agent. Menu focus, menu extra. You are time machine. Menu extra. Accessibility shortcuts. Menu extra. 100%. Sound. Menu extra. Bluetooth. Menu extra. User. Menu extra. Show emoji and symbols. Control center. Mike Siri. Mar 8 19. Mar 8 oh. Siri. Control. Show well, emoji. User. Passed the Bluetooth. Battery. Let's 100%. See. Sound. Me accessibility. Time machine. Focus. Me CCC. One password. Dropbox 143. Um, point so rocket. let's say Menu. you wanted Dropbox to go into Dropbox. That's not. Um, I could just press VO space to activate it. One pass CCC focus so, menu so time machine. Showing the battery. Accessibility okay. 100%. Sound Bluetooth men user menu X show um, emoji and symbol control idea. center microphone in we use can Siri. Also Siri menu X. bring up the control center directly. Um, Mar through 8, here. 19 hours, 28 minutes, and 27 and seconds. So clock forth, menu extra. Activate you are something, currently on you a menu press notification VO space. center window scroll area. Notifications list. And it took us to the notification the center, which we can explore Finder. later. Let's go to the control center with VO Shift O. Application, control center, system dialog, display, sound, music app, zoom us, display. This control center is very much like that found in iOS. I don't know its position on screen. I know that menu extras are, in a sense, to the right of the menu bar, uh, but control center, maybe it's kind of the same area since it's menu, It's part of the menu extras. I just know the keyboard command to get there. Microphone, image. I'm going to go to the beginning with the Zoom home. Us. And again, it has this zoom. Wi-Fi, selected, toggle button. And Wi-Fi. Actions available. Here, we can press VO space to turn Wi-Fi off. I don't want to do that. Or VO command space to explore additional actions or details in Wi-Fi. We're going to do that with Bluetooth. Do not disturb. Selected toggle button. Yeah, my do actions not disturb available. was on, but somehow on somebody got through. Um, I need to fix those settings. Bluetooth, selected, toggle button. Bluetooth, if I VO command, so first of all, if I VO space, that is going to toggle Bluetooth off. Let's actually hear the hint. I'm going to VO left Do not disturb. and VO right. Select Bluetooth, selected, toggle button. Actions available. You are currently on a toggle button. To select or deselect this checkbox, press Control, Option, Space. To show details, press Control, Option, Command, Space first to bring up the action menu. We're not going to toggle it off because I want to use my keyboard still as Bluetooth. So we're going to press VO command space. Actions menu to items. 
And I can down arrow or VO down arrow. It really doesn't matter. Show details. I'm going to select show details by pressing enter. Control loot one updated item. Actions available. You and are currently on a button to click. It's telling me I'm on a button, but again, it. I don't know whether I'm at the very beginning or I'm somewhere in the middle. Sometimes voiceover doesn't always take your, it places your uh, cursor where the keyboard focused item is, or at least that's the default behavior. So we could be somewhere Magic in the keyboard with new middle. Um, if I go to the beginning with VO Home. Bluetooth. Bluetooth on switch. And Actions available. You are currently on a switch. To select or deselect this checkbox, press Control, Option, Space. I could turn it off here. Heading, Devices, Magic Keyboard with Numeric Keypad, 77%, Selected, Toggle Button. If you I wanted to disconnect this device, I could press V of Space, and it's nice. It gives me the battery Chanel's status. Chanel's AirPods number 2, Toggle Button. Chanel's AirPods Pro, Toggle Button. If I you want my Mac to search for AirPods, I can press VO space. And what that would do, it would uh, look for my AirPods, see if it could try to connect. Um, so that's one way to try to get a, an already paired device to connect to your Mac. Magic keyboard with new Bluetooth preferences button. If you want to add a device for the very first time, you'll have to go to Bluetooth preferences. And again, this is a dialogue with several different controls. So we have to press VO space to activate the one we want. I'm going to press escape Finder, and get out desktop, of here. Okay. And we can quickly go to the notification center with VOO. Notification center, window, scroll area. You we are, are in a scroll area, and navigation here is a bit more jumpy. Um, by the, the way, area. the yeah. actions menu, the view command space is something that you will use in apps that have been, or uh, experiences, whatever, that have been Im exported over from iOS and iPadOS. In the Messages app, in the Control Center, for instance, that's kind of an iOS feature. So we have to use VO command space to expand details. The same goes for the Notification Center. Notifications list. What I did is press VO left just to be reminded of where I'm at. If I press VO shift down arrow, that gets into interacting. And why do we need to interact? to get to something contained within another item. The Mac um, organizes information hierarchically and interacting is really just a way to explore an item in further detail. Um, maybe there's, some people think interacting is a pain and you know, why do we need to? But the ability to interact gives us a choice or the choice, whatever, if we are in a dialogue that contains a toolbar and we don't really want anything in that toolbar, we can totally bypass it without having to via right arrow or whatever through a whole bunch of irrelevant items just to get to what we want. So I do need to interact and I'll press VO shift down arrow. In notifications, list, messages, Ursula Odom, I bug jump start mint. All right, and that conversation should have been muted. At least it is on my phone. So talk about things not being exactly synced over. Um, let's, we can now bring up the actions menu with VO command space. Actions menu for items. Close. I want to close, so I'll press return. Close. Notifications enter. empty. It's technically called the return key. Okay, and now it's saying notifications empty. Um, it's also not making any dialogue when I press V on the arrow key. So I'm going to uninteract. Out of notifications empty list. And edit widgets, but widgets, grid, widgets, grid. I was pressing via left arrow a couple of times as I press it and go as far to the left as it will. There is no more, there are no more notifications. So um, we dismissed what is available. I'm now going to press escape. Finder, desktop, Chanel alias, alias. Finally, we turn to adjusting speech attributes. Maybe you don't like the rate of Actions your voiceover available. voice, or maybe you don't even like your voiceover voice. 
maybe you want the voiceover volume itself to be louder without affecting the whole system volume. You can change these things by holding down a number of keys and basically performing finger gymnastics. Um, now, you, there are alternate ways of holding down these keys. What you'll need to do is press VO command and shift in the left hand, hold that down, and press and release the right arrow or left arrow uh, with your right hand. This takes you into what's called the speech attributes rotor. And voiceover, there seem to be a million different rotors. This is one of them. And it is a continuously looping rotor. It doesn't matter which arrow key you press, left or right, because you'll um, get to all the choices you know, in the same way. One thing people like to do is the control option lock command, which is basically VO semicolon, and that holds down the VO keys. So you can, your other fingers are free to press other modifiers. Um, and that can be useful. You just have to remember to turn it back off because if you don't, you'll have all sorts of interesting behavior and you won't be able to get to the dock and all these other things and menus. So um, you can turn VO or option lock on, cap the control option lock on if you want or not. Okay, but for now, I'm just going to hold down control option command shift. I find it easier in this case to hold down control and option. So I'm holding all that down with my second, third, fourth, and fifth fingers of my left hand. And I'll just press right arrow with the pinky of my right hand. Rate 50%. And the first thing we are at is rate. To increase the rate, I can, I'm can. i still holding down all these keys in my left hand. I haven't let go. Um, but th So then to increase the rate, I would press up arrow. 55%. 60%. 70%. 80%. 90%. And to decrease the rate, and I've actually created a keyboard command for myself that makes this a little bit easier, and keyboard commander, um, but to decrease the rate, I can press down arrow. 60%. 55%. There's a lot of delay between when I'm actually pressing the key and when voiceover speaks. So if I say I'm pressing now. 50%. That was at least a span of two seconds before we heard voiceover say anything. So this method can be a bit slow. I'm now going to, well, let's say my fingers are getting tired in my left hand. They need a break. Closing right menu. Chanel alias, alias. Okay. Actions available. No problem. So lifting up automatically closes the speech attributes rotor. If I want to go back into it again, I can simply hold down all these keys and press right arrow or left arrow rate 50%. And it's going to resume with the last menu that had focus. If I right arrow now, still holding down all these keys in my left hand. Pitch 50%. Same thing with pitch, up arrow to increase, down arrow to decrease. Volume 55%. Volume, you can adjust your voiceover volume um, independently, but it can't go louder than the system volume which sometimes is annoying, but um, you can still adjust it to be as loud or as quiet as it needs to be without affecting the system volume as a whole. Intonation, 50%. Intonation is the amount of expression voiceover uses when reading um, punctuation or sentences with punctuation. How much does it you know, raise pitch for exclamation or question mark or whatever? Braille table, English, unified, system. If you have connected a Braille display to your Mac, you'll see um, a an option for Braille, which really doesn't belong in the speech attributes rotor, but whatever. Voice, Ava, English. And then my favorite part, voice. I will show you in our section on the voiceover utility how you can download additional voices. But here are some of the voices that I already have downloaded on my computer. If I... Um, still holding all these keys and press up arrow. Allison, English. Automatically select based on language. I don't recommend choosing automatically select based on language because if you are on a page that is coded in a different language or even with a different dialect, your voice will automatically switch on you. 
Uh, Allison, so English. I recommend choosing your preferred voice. Ava, English. Fiona, English. Karen, English. Nikki, English. Olive, English. Samantha, English. Siri Compact Voice 1, English. Ew. And you get the idea. Sometimes uh, we still have voices on here that I didn't think I had on here, but I don't like compact Samantha, voices. Samantha, English. I'm going Olive back English. up to Nikki, Ava. Karen, Fiona, Ava, English. And then if I VO command, shift, right arrow again. Rate, 50%. We're back at rate. So as I said, it's a continuously looping menu. I'm now going to lift up on all these keys. Closing, rate, Chanel alias, a and another way you can adjust the volume, the pitch, and the rate is via the trackpad. If your trackpad commander is on, um, you can do hold down command while performing a clockwise gesture to increase your volume and a counterclockwise to decrease. Your pitch, you can control a option and clockwise gesture to increase the pitch counterclockwise to decrease, and rate, you can hold down control, while those same gestures to increase or decrease. Okay, that is all for now with some of those things. And in a few minutes, I'd like to turn our attention to getting voiceover help and commands help, because I've given you lots of things. You don't have to remember them all because you can find them in commands help zoom us but first us. i will just take a little moment do any of you have any questions Bumi. And you, yes who is that Bumi. Bumi, yes how did you get your time to read our minutes and second mine is reading dates hour and minutes oh Wait a minute, I modified my voiceover script. What? Yeah, I changed the script. Oh, wait a minute, let's see. Oh no, this time, okay. What you do is you, um, I went to the menu extras and then I did VO end or I was already there. And the way you change the time that's displayed there is in system preferences under time and date. So sometimes I like to go there and see the seconds right before I, you know, open a meeting or host or whatever. Um, so yeah, excellent question. This is Nikki. Yes, Nikki. So I always wonder, I wondered this because this is kind of inconvenient. You had mentioned the application chooser, which is really cool, but I found out a few months ago that when my system dialogues book came up, um, you know, the, the Mac will constantly beep at you and I didn't know what it was until I found that out. Is there an easier way to find those system dialogues other than going into application chooser because you cannot command tab to them at all? No. Um, sometimes they may show in the notification center, but I don't know of an easier way, okay. you know, other than VOF1F1, yeah. down arrow to system dial, enter on. Does anyone else know of an easier way? Uh, maybe not. Um, Mark I don't says know. I need to make a keyboard commander. That's one thing he was doing yesterday that I haven't done yet. So I guess I have to yeah, go Yeah, you can actually do that. Keyboard commanders are great. Like I said, I have one for my rate. Um, basically, you know, you, the keyboard, so the keyboard commander is just another way of controlling voiceover by holding down the right option key and pressing um, letters or numbers on your keyboard. So right. Right option T is for time. I'm just trying to explain this to everyone. And hopefully you had a chance to do the reading assignment where it talks about commanders. Um, but yeah, you can actually create your own keyboard commander commands. So um, yeah, that, that might be helpful for you. Otherwise, later on, I'll talk about adjusting the behavior of function keys. So you don't always have to hold down the F1 or the FN key uh, when performing commands with voiceover. All right, anyone else with a question? I know this is a lot of info <laughs> and um, I appreciate. Um, um, so this, this is, is your teacher's assistant. 
All right, let's let Herbie go, and then we'll get to Kim. Okay. Okay, so point of clarification, uh, Chanel, when you were talking about adjusting the time for the seconds, I think you meant, um, or unless you're thinking of something else entirely, are you thinking of the dock and menu bar options and system preferences? Where yes, you can that one. Clock? Yes. Okay, because you said time, so there's no time option and system preferences. Oh, that's right. And it changes. It's well back what back in the day when I yes. had a Mac. You know, no, it used to be date and time. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So you go to under your system preferences, you go to dock and menu bar. There is a table, and you go down. I like to V O N and work my way back up because it's quicker. But you VO, um, you, you look for the table, then go up to clock, and there are some check boxes. I make mine is set to digital, and there's a check box that says like read seconds, and so you make sure that is checked. And um, there you go. Another thing you can do there is you can set it so that it will announce the time on the hour, half hour, or 15 minutes, but you have to remember to reset it every time you restart. Yeah. Um, and I was also going to mention that, yes, I re- recognize that system dialogues may be a bit complicated, it seems like, on the Mac. I do think it's, personally, I think it's a little bit easier than the uh, other operating system that shall not be named. But to get to your <laughs> stuff, that's just my opinion for what it's worth, if that offers any comfort. And that, I'll y- yield the floor to Kim. All right, Kim. <laughs> um, would you repeat the home and end commands you said? VO function left arrow is home. Yeah, so just home by itself is FN left arrow. End is FN right arrow. Page up is FN up arrow. And page down is FN down arrow. But those things don't typically work by themselves unless you add the VO keys. Um, So that's where we say VO home. And so then that becomes VO FN left arrow. This is okay. Michelle. That is okay. Yes. This is Michelle. Thanks. Yes, Michelle. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Um, the VL keys, and I'm hearing you talking about the FM key. Now I know that one. Okay. Again, can you please tell me what is a VO key? I mean, VO command, VO. Um, yeah, so VO is stands for voiceover, and the VO key or voiceover modifiers are either you hold down control and option at the same time, or you use caps lock. So when we say VOD, that means caps lock D or control option D. VOM, um, okay. caps lock M or control option M. Okay, okay. Thanks for that. I have another. I just want to make a comment. Sure. Um, I am hard of hearing and I have a pair of hearing aids on and I have my Bluetooth. I mean, I have my Bluetooth uh, connected to my iPad to hear you uh, closely and clearly. And when you were uh, um, manipulating the uh, Bluetooth uh, on your uh, computer and uh, keyboard or whatever, it disrupted my hearing aid completely. I thought that was so interesting. Huh. I was, yeah, I, I have what you call Octicon pair of hearing aid called made by Octicon. And um, that I, I have trouble with that because um, okay. I have to I, I have to leave the if if I want if I turn the uh, Bluetooth on, then on any device it conflicts with the other devices at the same time. So I have to turn right. my phone off and turn my iPad on off okay. and go to the yeah, laptop. I just want to share that with you. I, I, I was surprised. I thought something was wrong with my hearing So <laughs> this is Herbie real quick. Yes. So I'm sorry, Michelle, what say device, you said your, your Bluetooth device conflicts with like your Mac and iPhone and iPad? Yeah, and my hearing aid. Well, so she said I, it totally went out when I was going into Bluetooth, is what she was saying. Oh, yeah, it was okay. flipping. It was flipping back and forth, you know, like it's going from one device to the next. But device, I think... And my hearing aid was confused. Right. So I was going to say, I don't know if you're... I don't know if hearing aids are like other devices that have settings or not, but there's usually... You might want to see if there's something that it just remembers like the last connection. Um, oh. But... 
that's something you may want to talk to your hearing aid provider, uh, you know, company about if how to keep it from getting confused with devices. Anyway. All right. Well, Thank I'm you. going. Thank you. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. going to go back into lesson for a little while. And yes, Herbie, I know it's 10 till. And so I will then try to stop in like 15 minutes and uh, we'll go from there. So let me start the sharing. Oh, so it takes away my focus um, from sound. That's okay. All right. You have started computer audio share. Now I want to turn our attention to getting some voiceover help. I'm going to put focus on the desktop with VO Shift D. Desktop, desktop, group. And we are going to go to voiceover help by pressing VO H. That is control option H or caps lock H. Voiceover help menu, five items. Some of these items will be familiar to you. I can down arrow. User guide control option, question mark. The user guide is better viewed on another device. So if you have an iPhone, um, later on I'll also, well, actually probably this week, I'll send you a resources document with the user guide as a link. um, And you can view it on another device or uh, share it and send it as a PDF file. But if you want to look at the voiceover user guide on your Mac, maybe wait until we have had a few more lessons, especially navigating in Safari, and then it might make a little bit more sense. Command help menu control option HH. We will return to commands help in just a little bit. Keyboard help control option K. Keyboard help, you are familiar. Hopefully you were in keyboard help locating those keyboard keys last week, practicing, finding them, all that good stuff. Sound help menu. Sound help. These are sounds that voiceover makes for certain actions. I will expand the menu with right arrow. Sound help menu, 75 items. Actions available. Animation shaking. Announcement basic alert. Application updated an item. And there's lots of you these are currently to go in the voiceover through. menu. This is a list of voiceover menu options. To navigate up and down the list, use the arrow keys. To choose a menu item, press return. To close the menu, press escape. Okay, so even here it says you can use return. Let's collapse the menu by pressing left voice arrow. Voiceover help menu on sound help menu. Quick start tutorial control option FN command 8. And then the quick start the- tutorial which maybe you also had a chance to review. Quick start tutorial. Unlike most other menus, pressing down arrow in this one doesn't wrap around to the beginning. So we will up arrow to commands help. I think we could also press C. Two items, command help, menu control option, HH. And then press enter. Commands help menu, 15 items. Okay. And to, oh, I should have let it give the hint, but we are in a voiceover menu. Let's just down arrow to hear the categories that are available. General menu, information menu, navigation menu, text menu, web menu, find menu, tables menu, size and position menu, audio menu, braille menu, visuals menu, speech menu, hotspots menu, keyboard commander menu, trackpad commander menu, trackpad commander menu. We're at the bottom of the list. Let's say I want to view items in trackpad commander. I could right arrow, and then we can begin pressing down arrow again. There are two purposes for commands help. One is just simply to learn what is available to you as a voiceover user. What can voiceover do and how can it do it? Uh, When I was learning the Mac, I was self-taught and I would listen to podcasts and things, but then I'd also try things in text edit or pages or mail and I would try to figure out, okay, what's the voiceover command to read the line or the word or whatever. And I didn't know so much about searching efficiently through commands help. So I would frequently encounter a whole bunch of other commands that I didn't need, but constantly going through those menus made me familiar with what was available. So when I did need them next time, I could that more easily and quickly find them. That is my little story of learning the Mac. And so commands help is just useful for learning what's available to you and how you can do that. Another good purpose of commands help is actually searching for a specific command. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's take a look at some things in the trackpad commander menu, since I was able to spend very little time going over trackpad 
commands with you last week. Trackpad commander menu, 39 items. There's you lots current- of things here. Over. Oops, sorry, I raised my voice over trying to over the voiceover. We'll just down arrow and you can hear a few of them. Describe item in voiceover cursor, triple tap. Escape, two finger, scrub. Go to dock, two finger, double tap, bottom. Go to menu bar, two finger, double tap, top. Magic tap, two finger, double tap. Okay, in macOS Monterey, the magic tap is listed before just pressing two finger, double tap didn't do anything. Um, it would just say two finger double tap if you had keyboard help on. I'm not quite sure if the magic tap will allow us to answer incoming calls. So far, it doesn't look like it has or do play and stop music. But who knows? Maybe they'll expand that uh, capability. Move down, flick, down, move left, flick, left, move right, flick, right. And so you can see all of the trackpad commands that are available to you. I'm going to press escape for now. We could actually press left arrow to get back to the main menu with all of the different other um, menus listed. But let's just press escape. Chanel alias. And the quick way to get into commands help is to hold down VO, that is caps lock or control and option, and type H twice. So VOHH. Commands help menu, 15 items. And let's say I need to know the command for bringing up that app chooser because it's not that easy to remember 143 Oops, items. I accidentally typed f let me press delete or backspace 15 items. and we will begin to type app chooser so a 203 items actions control P, option 14 items application chooser menu control option fn 11 and one thing voiceover help frequently lists commands involving function keys as you know, VO, command, whatever, FN, and then the numbers one through the equal sign because you can use those to simulate the function keys. Um, I would just simply say VO, F1, F1, but whatever. And now if rather than having to press those keys, we can press enter and it will take us to the... Um, the uh, app chooser. Application chooser menu, two items. You and now we only have two o- items here. It's much neater. And then you can just simply use your down arrows. So Chanel Lay- if you don't want to press a lot of those keys or do finger di- uh, gymnastics, you can simply carry out a search and then have it execute the command without even having to press all the keys required for that command. I'm now going to go to the help again with VOHH. Voice command help menu, 15 items. And I'm going to look for a command called screen curtain. So I'm going to type S. 221 items, actions, control, option, command. 26 items, scroll down one page. 24 items, scroll down one page. E. Three items, describe mouse pointer location. From top left of screen, control, option, FN, 55. The more I type, the further the results are narrowed down. I'll press down arrow. Run Apple script script. Voice over screenshot to mail. Right. Option. X. Toggle screen curtain on or off. Control option FN underscore. And then I could type control option FN underscore. At this point, I could press enter to carry that out. Or maybe I want to practice and using these commands. Maybe, you know, there's a command I'm going to use a lot, uh, like, I don't know, going to the desktop. And I look it up just for so I can hear the shortcut. But then I press escape to get out of the menu and then practice it. That's perfectly acceptable, too. Um, Because not only do you want to hear what's available to you, but you want to get your finger, you want to build up your finger memory. That's also important if you're going to use the keyboard. Um, So screen curtain, why do I bring this up? Well, if you are somebody coming to voiceover for the first time and you have some vision, you may be looking at the screen. You may be trying to follow what the voiceover cursor is doing. The cursor may not be moving around logically to you. It may be off in some other place, but you're hearing voiceover say something else. It's can be less distracting to turn on the screen curtain. That is, it essentially puts a piece of paper over your screen so you can't see what things are jumping around, what's moving around, where your focus is. You have to rely entirely on listening to voice over. 
And that may be really, really daunting at first. Um, you may only want to do it, you know, maybe commit to practicing your Mac for 15 minutes or 10 minutes a day with a screen curtain on and then the rest of the time without it on. Um, I think it, it can be very useful to use any remaining vision you have, but in order to do that, you need to fully realize the capabilities of voiceover and get comfortable with voiceover commands and then add your vision to see, okay, where is it going to be easier to use vision and where is it going to be easier to use VO. So with that soapbox being said, and hopefully the nice, oh, nice way, I'm going to press enter and that will toggle our screen curtain. Screen curtain on. Actions okay, available. for some reason I thought it was already on, but then we could also just practice this command VO shift F11. Screen curtain off. And that turns it off VO shift F11. Screen curtain on. Turns it back on. Okay, that is commands help. And I was going to have us turn then to going into system. Well, actually, we can do this. Let's show you quickly how to check for software updates. I'm going to get, there were two ways to go to system preferences. One is in the menu bar under the Apple menu. The other is in the dock. And I'm going to go there in the dock to show you a little trick. So VOD dock. and Actions then SY. You are currently on Apple. Okay, why Club was that? System pre there, now it's on system preferences. It wasn't saying that immediately. So VOD, SY, and then instead of pressing enter, we can bring up the context menu. Um, I know it's called another thing in voiceover, but I just think of it as the context menu for this system preferences. And we're going to find all of the system preference categories listed in this menu. So if I VO shift M menu and down arrow accessibility, Apple ID, battery, Bluetooth, date and time, desktop and screen saver, displays, dock and menu bar. All of these are preferences are listed in nice alphabetical order. So here on dock and menu bar, um, boon me or anyone else could go to adjust the time um, and have it display seconds. But we actually want to go to software update. I'm going to use first letter navigation and type SO. Software update. And then press on enter or return. Finder, system search text field, blank. And one bug in Monterey is that when going into system preferences with voiceover, focus is placed in the toolbar and particularly in the search field. I want to uninteract with the search field because why? We don't really need to be in the toolbar so that we can explore the surrounding areas. If I un uninteract with VO shift up arrow Out of toolbar. and then VO right arrow. Software update. Software update. Image. Your Mac is up to date. Mac OS Monitor 812.2.1. And what do you know? Your Mac is up to date. I can um, look at further details if I VO right. Last checked. Today at 0639. Software update. Automatically keep my Mac up to date. Checked. Checkbox. And you definitely want to check automatically keep my Mac up to date. Advanced button. In advanced, you, you can control on... what type of updates your Mac looks for. So if I VO space on advanced. In dialog, check for updates. Checked. Checkbox. Download new updates when available. Checked. Check. Install Mac OS updates. Checked. Checkbox. Install app updates from the App Store. Checked. Checkbox. Install app updates from the App Store. So this would, if you do download Mac apps, which there really aren't as many useful Mac apps as there are iOS apps, or at least useful apps that you can find in the App Store. Most Mac apps that you get, you will get from third-party websites. Install system data files and security updates. Checked. Checkbox. Even if you have all these other op preceding options unchecked, you definitely want to have the security update um, security options checked. OK button. And then there's an you OK button if I press VO space. OK button. Yeah. Advanced button. Sometimes it doesn't take my keyboard press initially. And there we go. Um, there is no, if we go all Help the way button. to the end, button. there's no OK or save button. Typically, there won't be an OK or save in a system preference pane unless you bring up advanced options, as we just did. And now we're back in the main area, so we can simply press Command Q to quit. Finder. Desktop. Chanel and we can hear the time with right option T. March 8, 8, 05, 
p.m. It's 8.05. I actually have, well, later on, I'll, you'll, the time will sound different because I have adjusted the voiceover script, so it doesn't always give me the date. But anyway, Zoom us. Zoom. I'm now returning Zoom to Zoom. I'm going to stop the share. And we can open it up for uh, questions. Bunmi. Yes, Bunmi. Please, where did you go to to search for keyboard commands, like to type the commands that you were looking for? Yeah, actually, let me clarify. You cannot search for things like print or save or open or new. Those are Mac commands. Um, and the way you find those is by looking in the menu bar. It used to be that you could accessibly search the menu bar in the help menu, but lately I have not gotten that to work very well. So the voiceover commands help only works for voiceover commands. Um, did you have a question about that? That's just a point I forgot to clarify. Yeah, like how did you search for, how did you search for the video comment that you wanted? Like how did you search for screen courting? So basically I typed VOH twice and then mm -hmm. I began typing in screens. So I typed S and it was oh. like 200 some items. I typed C and then I typed R and I oh. eventually it narrowed it down to three items. And then I pressed down arrow and I maybe pressed that once or twice. I can't remember. It brought up the screen curtain. And then I pressed enter to execute the command or to enable the screen curtain. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Chanel, it's Chris yes. Bell. So uh -huh. um, why did you uh, always, not always, but most of the time start going back to the desktop before you went, let's say to the, um, well, whatever you went to, why did you start at the desktop? It's just kind of a good place to start from. Um, sometimes I forget, for example, we went, we were in that other, when Chrome and um, went to the menu bar and <laughs> I forgot we were in Chrome when, and so, it, you know, we saw the menus that pertained uh, to Chrome. It can just be useful. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know, you don't always have to do that. And so it could just be something that I do, but then I've also heard this uh, gentleman who does podcasts, David Woodbridge, he always <laughs> takes everybody back to the desktop. So I guess I've just um, implemented okay. that habit. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yep. I'm going to say sure. good night. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Yes, Kim. Um, could you go over one more time? It, it's the very last thing you covered. And I wasn't near my brailler. Don't. Going into system preferences, sure. The quick way to get the uh, software update. <laughs> so I did VOD to get to my doc, and then SY for system preferences. Uh, yeah. For some reason, Voiceover didn't announce we were there, but I figured that out. And then we do VO Shift M. That is to bring up the context menu. And then we're able to down arrow or use first letter navigation. I typed SO for software update and I pressed enter. Neo shift M. Yes. For when you're on system preferences context. in the dock. Yep. Yeah. For context. And then after Neo shift M, you did what? Down arrow. Down arrow. To okay. make sure the menu was open and then SO for software update. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Okay, well, in that min in that case, we can end uh, five minutes early. Uh, Herbie, did you have any announcements about the study session I'll, or anything? Well, just a reminder, we do have our normal study session this Thursday at six. We're gonna go over the material six central, seven eastern, four Pacific, right here on this very same Zoom call, and. 
I do encourage everybody to show up. We had a great turnout last week, but I know we can even do better. So if you can make it, and if you're in a situation where you really can't talk, just make sure you let me know right at the beginning. So I don't call on you, but I do encourage you to try to be able to at least be able to answer one question as, and this is to, again, not to put anybody on the spot. This is to really assess A, you know, your, how well you're comprehending the material and B, what we can do better to explain things. And... But we want you to be able to, like I said, really comprehend the material. Last week's session was went great. I did send out the recording for it. And uh, so hopefully you got that in your emails. And we take the first time of the class to uh, for you to ask any additional questions that you did not think of tonight. So Chanel will send out the lesson. You will have a chance to hear it again. And come prepared Thursday night. And I do mean come prepared. <laughs> that does sound ominous, doesn't it? But it's meant to. No. Um, but do come prepared and, uh, you know, we can uh, make this thing work. I do think so. All right. And I will try to send out some notes for this um, and the previous lesson. You know, just not necessarily notes, just a list of keyboard commands and um, anyway, I will talk to you later. Thanks so much for coming. Um, thanks for keeping with staying and listening and all that. And you will get it. It's a lot to take in now, but you will get it. So with that, have a good night and a good week. Thank you, Chanel. Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Yeah. Herbie, really quick. It's Nikki. Yes. Yes. Did you want to get together at some point? Like, all right, said, let's um, stop this off the recording. Oh, or, you know, yes. you you may want to. Let me see. Let me stop. I forgot. Sorry. It's okay. I Later. was waiting till everything was over, but then I forgot that. <laughs>